Thank you so much. Uh, I, I really am, you know, you hear it every time somebody's introducing someone, but sometimes it sounds lame. I hope this one it does not. It, was, it really is from the core of my marrow. I am honored and privileged to be introducing to you Imam Qazwin. Very few people have the scope of, and the enlightenment to treat faith the way they are supposed to be treated, which is everyone respects everyone. God made the judgment, we do not. Uh, I do not want to take any time from him, so I will give you the floor to ask questions. And, uh, he will be shooting straight from the heart. Well, first let me thank my dear brother, Mohi. He he thinks so nicely of me and so kind to, to say these words. I don't deserve them, really. Uh, but uh, before you ask, I just want to say something. So I make you more, you know, comfortable asking because, as I can see, probably some of you are not so comfortable. Because probably to you, it's the first time, to some of you actually, this is the first time you're meeting a Muslim Imam. Uh, I was born in Iraq, in a city called Karbala, and I'm sure many of you have heard about that city. It's a holy city in Iraq. And after that, I went to Kuwait, and then to Iran. I studied, I did my religious studies in Iran. And then in 1992, I came to the United States. Up until I came to the United States in 1992, I knew there were Christians in, in Iraq. But I never had any interaction with Christians. I never had any interaction with Jews in Iraq. There were Christians and there were Jews, and obviously there are some other denominations in Iraq. But I lived my own inner world. In Karbala, everybody is Muslim. So I really didn't have any interaction beyond my, you know, my little world. And uh, it was in the United States when I came. And I just wanted to share this with you. It was in the United States when I had my first encounter with non-Muslims. I was with my brother, actually, California. He was driving and I'm sitting next to him. We passed by a church in a city called West Covina. So I see a church. It was Sunday, there was a church, and the parking lot was full. Probably there were over three, four hundred cars. I told my brother, what's going on here? He said, there's a pastor, you know, a church, and the pastor is giving a sermon. I said, can we go? He says, what? I said, can we go in? He says, you want to go in? Really? I said, yes, really. He says, he wanted to say, he didn't say, out of respect. He wanted to say, are you out of your mind? <laughs> but he didn't say that. He says, are you sure you want to go inside the church? I said, yes. He says, what do you do? I said, come on, I'm not going to convert to Christianity. I just want to go see what's going on here. And I have the chance to see what, the, what does the what does the pastor have to say when he speaks to his congregation. I know what I tell my when I what I say to my congregation, what what I preach to my congregation. I want to see what he says. So I, we went in, and it was a beautiful church. And the pastor was speaking, and there were at least four or five hundred people listening. And I listened. And at that time, my English was not that good, really. I, I just came to the United States. I was not able to speak English fluently. So my brother was occasionally translating, but all I heard him talking about love. Jesus loving you, you love Jesus, and about the concept of love. So as he is talking, I'm listening, I said to myself, look, in our religion we also talk about love. And you know, one of Muslims believe God has 99 names. And one of his names, Al-Wadud. Al-Wadud is the loving one. And I said to myself, look, almost everything he's talking about is there in my religion. And how similar we look. And for every word he says, quoting Jesus, I have a word to quote from Muhammad. 
And obviously, Jesus, as, as Muslims, Jesus to us, he's a prophet as well. He is as respected as Muhammad and as revered as Muhammad. Because we Muslims believe that there are five superior messengers. Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, Noah, and Abraham. So, we place Jesus almost in the same place or status we place Muhammad. So, I'm listening to him and... In my mind, as I'm listening, these words he was uttering are resonating in my mind and reflecting my own faith uh, system. The reason I mention this is that when we see at which, when we do not see each other, when we do not interact with each other, we think of each other that we are weird. I think you're weird. You may think that I am weird. You may think that I have some, I may harbor some very weird thoughts. I could be a very weird person. I could be someone who does not think like you think. And probably I would have the same, you know, thought about you. But when we meet and we mingle and we exchange thoughts, we find how striking our similarities are be it Muslims or Christians or Jews or uh, what else, uh, non-denominational. Basically, we hold the same values, the same beliefs. And we worship God with different tongues and with different languages <coughs> and, and different styles. But the direction is the, is the same. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لم تقولون ما لا تفعلون كبر مقتا عند الله أن تقولوا ما لا تفعلون إن الله يحب الذين يقاتلون